Tepito, Mexico City's underworld. La Union Tepito is a cell-based criminal organization in Mexico City, named after one of the capital's largest neighborhoods. It is currently one of the city's main criminal players, funding itself from micro-trafficking, human trafficking, and extortion. However, it has recently found its dominance, seriously contested by both the targeted law enforcement crackdown and the incursion of larger Mexican cartels. From the 1990s to the early 2010s, the leading gang in Mexico City was the Tepito Cartel. They rose to power using their ties to the Beltran Leyva Organization, or BLO, and its chief enforcer, Edgar Valdez Villarreal, whose alias was La Barbie. The BLO's decline in the late 2000s, however, led to a concurrent loss in status for the Tepito Cartel inviting the arrival of competing groups, such as La Union de Pito. Formed between 2009 and 2012 by defectors from the declining groups such as the BLO and the Familia Michoacana, possibly on the initiative of Valdez Villarreal, La Union de Pito quickly challenged the de Pito cartel for control over both the de Pito neighborhood and large parts of Mexico City using targeted acts of violence to assert its dominance and push out other groups, including cells of larger national organizations like Los Zetas and the Sinaloa Cartel. In October 2012, six local drug retailers believed to have worked for the Sinaloa Cartel were executed in the street. Then in May of 2013, 12 people were kidnapped from a bar in Mexico City's Zona Rosa, including relatives of the Tepito cartel leaders. In both cases, La Union Tepito was blamed. By the end of the ensuing gang war, La Union Tepito was the predominant criminal force in Mexico City. Besides taking over drug retail spots across Mexico City, including Tepito itself, La Union began extorting local businesses often using the gata agata or drop-by-drop -drop method of offering high-interest loans to small business owners and street vendors with the threat of physical violence for those who could not pay. Taking over the center of the capital meant access to not just shops and street vendors, but also bars and nightclubs. Extorting these businesses was extremely profitable allowing drug retailers to operate inside and forcibly recruit employees as dealers or lookouts. La Union de Pito also developed ties to local police, granting the group a measure of impunity and forewarning with regard to law enforcement action. By 2017, however, another criminal entity would emerge named the Forza Anti-Union, which would challenge La Union's dominance. Two theories exist about the Forza Anti-Union, that they either arose as a vigilante group formed by business owners to combat La Union's extortion, or as a splinter group from La Union Tepito itself. The latter theory is held by Antonio Nito, a Mexico City journalist and author of a book on La Union Tepito, who says the Forza Anti-Union were not created as a criminal group per se, but rather as a temporary hit squad founded by one capo of La Union de Pito, alias El Tortoise, to avenge his brother's death at the hands of another capo, alias El Bidito. However, most Mexican media frame the Forza Anti-Union as a rival crime group who reportedly established close relations with high-ranking members of Mexico City's Secretary of Security and Civilian Protection, while violently competing to control the city's drug retail and extortion economies, particularly in the municipalities of Alvaro Abregon. Yeah, I know, I probably butchered that name. Sorry. Then in June of 2018, two dismembered bodies with the Norco banner were found on Mexico City's bustling interstate, 
with a message from La Union to Pito, threatening the Forza anti-union leader. It was only the most visible manifestation of a surge in violence that month, confirmed by Mexico City's head of government, Jose Ramon Amiva, to be caused by the clashes between the two groups. La Union de Pito remained stronger than its rivals, however expanding its extortion operations into wealthier parts of the city where it could demand higher amounts, sometimes up to 50,000 pesos a week which is around 2,600 U.S. dollars. Then in April of 2019, hundreds of local shopkeepers signed a letter pleading for Mexico City authorities to take action against La Union, with the leader of the association warning shopkeepers might be forced to form a self-defense group if nothing was done. One week later, he was shot seven times by armed men and killed. In October 2019, a police raid captured 31 union members and uncovered two synthetic drug labs. The raid was triggered by reports of collusion between gang members and city authority. According to Mexico City Security Secretary Omar Garcia Harfuck, who claimed to have a list of around 120 police officers that may have collaborated with La Union, Though 27 of those captured were later released, it did mark a turning point in La Union's fortune. Since then, it's had to contend with the increased presence in Mexico City of the country's two biggest crime groups, the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, abbreviated CJNG, and more recently, and to a lesser extent, the Sinaloa Cartel. By 2020, the CJNG had come to supply micro-traffickers with drugs in nine of Mexico City's 16 districts, with CJNG members directly extorting businesses in the historic center. Long a key union to Pito territory and the new Forza anti-union leader reportedly maintaining strong ties with the CJNG, including being supplied with drugs, arms, and hitmen to wage its war against La Union de Pito. Yet the CJNG's Mexico City campaign appears to have slowed down, with the cartel struggling to establish territorial control, and the Sinaloa cartel appears to have limited itself to dispatching envoys to the capital to try to increase its involvement in the lucrative drug consumption market. La Union de Pito's more pressing concern has therefore come from Mexico City law enforcement, who have deployed a relentless crackdown against it, freezing roughly $5.2 million across 1,500 Union de Pito linked bank accounts, and arresting some 550 of its members from January 2020 to April 2022, a greater number than those from the next 10 local crime groups combined. As a result, in February 2022, Mexico City's Secretary of Citizen Security, Omar Garcia Harfuck, declared La Union de Pito had been irreparably fragmented, claiming the group's prioritized targeting and its leader's arrest in early 2020 meant that gangs' remaining cells now operated in isolation, independently of central command. But that doesn't mean they're gone for good. Thanks for watching, and remember, if it's more interesting, you can find it here.